Competition is very, very important for kids, and I personally believe that every jiu-jitsu student eventually should be convinced to compete even just a few times. Now, there are several reasons for this. Even though some of your kids are not gonna be the best competitors, competition itself is very valuable for them and will give them some very useful skills and attitudes towards jujitsu, towards any sport that they do, towards life that you can only get out of competing with another human being. Again, not every kid is gonna be a stud competitor at your school. Some kids are not even ready to go out and compete. Maybe they're just not aggressive enough. They haven't chained enough techniques and material to Together to make it so that it would be worth them competing, they would just get steamrolled. That's fine. Make sure you work on developing their aggression and their skills in the room to get to a point where if they were to go out and compete, even if they lost every match, right, they would at least do reasonably well to where it wouldn't just be a complete waste of time. They wouldn't just get submitted or, you know, lose in the first 30 seconds. They would at least be able to fight back and put up a good fight. Get your students to that point. And once you've gotten them to that point, strongly encourage them and their parents to go out and compete. Again, not every student is going to be a stud competitor, but that's okay. The benefit for them to compete is to realize like, hey, when I go out there and I put my skill set against somebody else, I can't give myself excuses like I can in the training room when I'm doing drills or when I'm rolling with my friends. Like, oh, you know, I wasn't trying that day or they're just bigger than me, they're better than me. These are all excuses that you can say in the training room when you're going with another kid, or at least your kid can make when they're going with another kid. But when they go out and compete, they're going against someone that's usually been training the same amount of time as them and is the same size as them. So those excuses don't play out in the same way. And every kid wants to win. No kid is like perfectly one 100% okay with losing. Some of them are very mature and handle loss very well. Every kid wants to win when they go out and compete. And if they don't win, there is a self-reflection that can happen after the match. Why didn't I win? Why was I unable to beat this person? Where did I make my mistakes? How can I improve? This is the attitude that they should have to every obstacle that they face in life. How did I mess up? How can I overcome this? and then create a game plan with their coach to work through it so that next time they compete, they're better at that particular skill that they were deficient in that led to their loss. This is something that will apply in every aspect of life, is that self-reflection that happens after failure and even after success. Because look, I as a coach, whether my kid wins or loses, the thing I'm focused on is how can we do better? So if my kid you know, wins via triangle, was there something they could have done to make the triangle tighter? If there was, I'm going to show them that even though they won the match. I'm going to show them that after the match. Did my kid lose and get submitted by triangle? Well, then after the match, if I have time before co going on to coach another match, I'm going to show them like, hey, this is how you can escape the triangle. This is how you don't get caught. This is what happened to you. These are all things that I use to approach the match, to approach my student's loss or victory. I'm just using it as a means of getting them better because it's not about that particular local tournament. It's about the series of tournaments that they're going to do throughout their lives. And if you extend that logic even further, it's the series of fields that they will try to excel in throughout their life. They need a certain attitude in order to be successful. And your job as a coach is to cultivate those attitudes that are going to make them successful. So that self-reflection is very important. The ability to overcome defeat is very important. Also important, realizing that, you know, sometimes you're going to get hurt and sometimes things are not going to go your way and getting over that hump too. Sometimes the failure doesn't come in terms of a pure loss. Sometimes a kid will just lose in a devastating way. They just get submitted in 10 seconds or maybe they got their arm a little hyperextended in an armbar, which by the way, shouldn't happen and refs need to be on top of that, but it is what it is. Sometimes kids throw it on very quickly or it's in a weird position and it happens. Overcoming that sting and continuing to come to class anyway, continuing to get better anyway, makes a kid mentally resilient. And ultimately, right, that is what as parents and coaches we want for our kids. We want them to be as mentally and physically resilient as possible. Competition does that to a much greater degree than just pure training sessions. The other thing that they'll develop is camaraderie with their with their other fellow classmates if they go out and compete. All my kids when they go out and compete, they cheer each other on during matches, you know, they tell each other good job, you know, and they try to encourage each other to get better. This building of camaraderie is really important. It gives kid it gives kids friends and makes it so that if they lost, it doesn't sting as bad. You know, at least your friends are here, they're cheering you want. 
So there's many, many reasons why competition are so important, but I would just narrow it down to those. And I think if you as a parent are hesitant to bring your kid out to compete or your kid doesn't want to do it, get them to the point where they're at least reasonably comfortable with going or you could even bribe them. Be like, hey, listen, you know, if you go out and compete, we'll get ice cream afterwards. Maybe that'll work. Maybe it won't, you know, but it'll be something to incentivize them to go do it. And also remember if you're a coach, okay, you don't want to push a kid too far too fast, okay? Some of my kids, have taken more than a year to get ready to even compete just because they were very unaggressive and they were just temperamentally not in the right place to go out and compete and deal with the stresses of that. But get them to the point that they can because again, ultimately we're trying to make them better, better people. We're trying to make them tougher, more resilient mentally and physically and competition does that. Every parent, I highly encourage you guys talk to your coaches about competition, what they need to do and try to get your kid to do them. The last thing that I'll say is as a coach, remember, I do not think think that every single kid should learn submissions. Some kids are just not emotionally, mentally mature enough to handle that information responsibly. And so you need to be very selective about who you teach those submissions to. So have some sort of screening process for kids that are going to go on into a competition team style class or into a class in which they learn submissions because not every kid is ready for that and make sure that they are. If they're not ready for that, tell them, tell the parents what they need to work on. Again, everything that we do in here is to make sure that they improve and they get better and they get to the point where they can go out and do that kind of stuff. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you like this video. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and click that notification bell. That way you guys get notified every time we have new content out there. We'll see you next time.